Okay, we are on the air. <laughs> all right, so um, so this is for all you who didn't make it today, but there's a lot of people here, so thanks to all of you who did. I'm not gonna like take the time to go show you how many people are there. Um, but yeah, so, okay, so assignments. So basically, you know, that's gonna continue on as usual. Like we go through the calendar, the course calendar, um, I'll assign your readings and then you know give you something to think about for a week and then you write it. Okay. Now the thing that's kind of changes is participation. Um, so that's an important part of your grade, and um, we're not obviously going to have weekly discussions. So oftentimes what we do is I come in with my class notes, and then we kind of go over some topics. Sometimes ahead of what you're reading, sometimes a little bit after what you're reading and then we get in groups and discuss. Um, so here's what I'm thinking. Um, these are possibilities and I still have to kind of work it out clearly. One is asynchronous discussions. So that's kind of like posting something on a blog and then you, you know, chime in and discuss. So it's basically the same technology as text messaging, right? Um, and that can be done through here, discussions. I just added a bunch of these to what you guys can see as well, just so that they're there. But discussions allow you to do that. Like I can post an assignment, you know, a, a topic for discussion. Or you can post, um, I don't know why I did that. Um, you can post, like, you know, if I want to add a discussion, you know, I can say, you know, talk about, you know, talk talk about chapter five, four, or whatever, and then you put the question in there, add video, whatever, and then post it to all, all sections. So you'll see discussions on your end, and then you, you'll, have, you'll be alerted when you get a discussion to respond to, and then you know, it would be just like discussion questions. So it's sort of like, it's the same idea of like responding to a, a group text. Um, but a little more organized and then integrated into the course. Um, so that's asynchronous, meaning like you don't have to be at a certain place at a time and tune in, okay? Um, I think that's what we're gonna do, but another option is synchronous meetings, where that would be like, that's what you use Zoom for. It's like having a massive Skype or FaceTime session that you, know, you just join in this video call and Zoom has sort of a, a pretty usable interface where it's like, okay, we're all gonna meet at our normal class time. And there's like different, you know, you would show up and there'd be like, what is it? 14 of you like showing in and there's a little side window with everybody's little video. Um, I don't think we're gonna do that, but I'm gonna confirm this all. I gotta figure it out this weekend and try to make this as streamlined as possible. But I don't think we're gonna do that because it's a little bit like the main thing you would be doing is like, I would be presenting stuff and then you're there at that time to hear the presentation and then ask questions in real time if you have them. Or you can text questions too. Um, so if you've ever worked with Skype or FaceTime, they, I don't think FaceTime has a chat part, but Skype does where you can like, you know, a little bar where you can enter a text question and also be attending on video and so on. <clears throat> so that's what Zoom allows you to do. Um, and probably not going to do that. Um, they're sort of saying, you know, people, when they go home, they may not have, you know, the same schedule or may not have the same ability to connect at the same time. You're supposed to because you signed up for this course and we're free from 12 to 12.59. But, you know, yeah. So probably not that. Um, but one thing they showed us in a training video I saw yesterday is like, I can create a Zoom meeting with myself, which basically is like, okay, I'm now I'm connecting as though through Skype, but not connecting to anybody, and record that, and then create a file that you can play and watch at your, on your own time. So that's one way for me to like, you know, so I could like make these class notes, and then talk through into my microphone and say, okay, so point number one, point number two, and that's how you like create like this virtual lecture, you're sort of, videoing your um, your screen, you share your screen into the video and then you talk through your microphone and you know that could be available to all you guys. 
Um, and you can do that as well, but I don't, I don't know. I don't, the learning curve is a little bit, you have to like fiddle around with it. And I'm, I think we might just use the discussion thing in Canvas. This is a little easier. Um, I'll just, I'll just show you what you want. Cause then you can just, you just type in and you can upload if you wanna, if I wanted you to like video a response or if I wanted you to type a response or whatever, you can, it allows you to, you know, make something on your desktop and then upload it to, as a discussion response. So you can type in there, you can video in there. So. So is that gonna be like the form of all or most of our homework assignments through discussions or well, are those separate? Like, so what I'm trying to solve is this problem of participation versus assignments, yeah. okay? So, um, so what I want to do is, and they, the CLA, College of Liberal Arts, is sort of recommending do one homework assignment and one discussion thing per week. That's kind of what they say that when they're doing online teaching for gen ed courses, that's kind of what they, that their guidelines. So what I want to do is try it, see how it goes. Um, and if there's too much, you know, technical problems or whatever, then we might just consider taking all that stuff and making it written. You know, so taking make like take the take what would have been an in class discussion and just sort of tack it on to your your assignment assignments. So you're just responding individually without interacting, you know, in groups or multiple class. Um, and if that happens, then what I would do is cut the value of participation and then add whatever the remaining value is. So I think it's fifteen percent make it down to you know whatever percentage we are through the semester, you know, just take that away from participation and move it up to assignments if we have to, this is too cumbersome to do the, the, the discussions. Um, there's another function you should know with discussions is you can put people in groups. So when you are told that there's a discussion available, it's not, it doesn't show up as a, like, you know, it's, it's like responding to a text and it doesn't show up as, a text for the whole class, it shows up as a text to four people. You know, I assign the groups. And then go through that discussion prompt, and then on your end you see, you know, discussion has been posted, and then you see, but then you see that you're not responding to the whole class, you're responding to like four people or whatever, however I set it up on this end. Um, so that allows you to kind of have a smaller discussion with people in the class. Um, I mean, the whole point for me of having people talk in small groups is you get to know people, you can kind of interact in real time, and you share ideas freely back and forth. Like, when you're doing this all asynchronously, it's like we're responding to a text. It just doesn't quite have the same human <laughs> richness as real time. But we don't have real time anymore, so I'm going to see how this goes. All right, and see if it's, if what we're getting out of it is kind of worth the setup time. Um, Daria, do you have a question? Oh, because I was thinking about for the discussion yeah. idea. Let's say like if we if we can if we can do I mean that that's only a suggestion. We can you can make we can give a writing assignment, then like after that you can depend on how it goes, you can ask us to go to the people read your peers answer and give a comment whether or not you agree or not and why. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's another way to do a discussion. So I could take um, you know, set up this discussion where you're, what you're adding down here is a document, maybe someone's homework document or whatever, someone in your group, and then you're giving that person feedback, or, or I could just find a, anything, you know, find a, a what's it called, a, um, a YouTube video, put a link in there and say, discuss what, what do you think, um, and then, you know, there would be requirements, like everybody has to at least make comment of a hundred words or something like that, you know, so a couple sentences, um, long like this, um, or short paragraph. That's kind of, um, I think how I would go about it. So that's, I gotta figure that out a bit. Um, so that's our options there. Um, there's still some people who are doing their, we got about halfway through the class doing their country profile on bilingualism. So, um, what was I gonna say? Oh, so what I want you to do, like everybody has been doing this, I think, but if, you, if you're not, then just please 
do, um, you're supposed to be pre preparing like a PowerPoint and an outline, okay? So, and submitting them through the assignments on, um, on Canvas. Um, so I want you to keep doing that. You'll get your credit. Um, now the thing is, people who are really presenting in class, it's not quite the same as just putting a PowerPoint together and preparing an outline. Um, so what I kind of want to do is see if you can write up what you would say. Maybe instead of just the outline, just write a page or two of you know, what you would say, like a detailed outline of what the facts are about your country and that kind of thing. Um, it is possible through Zoom to do what I was just telling you where you share your screen with the Zoom recording and you record, you record it um, and you go through the PowerPoint and you kind of go through each slide and talk through and stuff and then you get that done, you post it and then you, you upload that and then other people use that as a basis for a discussion and then other people can ask questions. So that's possible. So I want to kind of see how you're feeling about Zoom and you know recording yourselves and all that. Do any of you has any of you like ever like made a video of yourself using your laptop or, or phone or something? Can you raise your hand? Okay. So you know like how to record yourself giving if I said I want you to record yourself giving a PowerPoint presentation, you could do that. Under ten minutes. No, okay, but not everybody. Raise your hand if you think you could. So let's say that's an option, is you could do it that way or you could write it up, okay? So write a short, sort of more than an outline of what notes, like what you would say if you were doing this. Okay. From uh, one of my classes we had to record ourselves and a problem that many of us had was that the videos were too long to upload to, to Canvas. Yeah. So the solution could be that we could use YouTube. Okay. So we can uh, upload it to YouTube and make it like uh, unlisted so yeah. many people who have content yeah. can see the video. Yeah, yeah. That would be great. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it that way too. That's a good suggestion. So some of you already have your own YouTube channels in this class. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> like, Examples of teachers teaching Spanish. <laughs> like, you know, isn't that interesting? Okay, so that's possible, yeah. Um, I'll give you options for what you want to do. Um, okay, and then last, group presentation on linguistic biography. We're just going to cut that. <laughs> um, um, so I, you were supposed to like work with a group and get together and then go record, you know, go interview people or record people and make it into a multimedia presentation. Um, since you're all like, I mean, you could do it, but I think that's going to be hard to organize. So what I wanted to do is just make it an individual sort of essay about your own experiences as a um, emerging bilingual, since you've all studied languages one way or another, either in a classroom or as a, you know, in your families or traveling abroad or immigrating maybe. So. I want you to kind of talk about your own experience, and it'll just be a, an essay. Thank okay. you, coronavirus. Yeah, <laughs> before, what's that? Thank you, coronavirus. I know, I know, I know. I was looking forward to seeing your work on that, especially since we've got at least several people who are like into media and arts and stuff like that. So, yeah. Could it be like a page? Or? I gotta, I gotta work it out. So, I mean, a final project's work. So, is this like a final project? This is like, no, it's not because the final exam is the final project. The final exam is just an exam. So, it'll be like what you did for the mid for the midterm, and then the final project is an essay. So, I'm going to write. Well, if you're not, but okay, I've, I've used. But you to, are, Jenna. Like, You've been in a foreign language classroom, right? Yeah, like many, many years. But like, it's all gone. All that information like left my. That's mind. what you write about. That's what you write about. That's what you write about. Like, you know, the, the old yeah. trope. You know, I took four years of Spanish or Italian or German. All I can say is Guten Tag. Like, why? What was your teaching experience? What was your experience like? What was your. I'll, I'll, like, I'll, what could have been improved? 
Yeah, I will and develop a prompt that people can it? reply to from a variety of experiences. Okay. All right, that's okay. You won't be left in the cold. I mean, everybody's at least tried to study a foreign language. So, you know, spent some time doing that. Or a second language. Okay, so final steps. And then, yeah, we'll have time for Gianna here. Um, so just watch for announcements here. And I'll, I'll post things in announcements. Um, do you guys see them right away, or is it better to send it as an email? Mm -hmm. I think we get an email when we put them. Which would you like more readily get? An email sent from Canvas or an announcement? Mm -hmm. yeah, I think I sent my email more. Personally, an email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you get an announcement, what is it? Like, do you get an email saying you have an announcement? Yeah. yeah. I think so. And then you link to it. Okay. So it's like double. Email. So that's like a double, yeah. Okay, I'll send, I'll send emails. Um, so, okay, homework for next week is going to be posted over the weekend, so I'm going to look. And, so that's, that's the most basic. That's our rhythm, where that's going to stay. And then i got to sort of figure out in the next few days what to do about discussions. Um, I'm thinking that we're going to do, one way or the other, it's going to be like one discussion, not three times a week. Okay. So um, I'm kind of going to aim for Wednesdays and then to post something and then you can think about it, comment and respond within a week. So that's kind of what I'm thinking of now is that uh, homework by Friday and then discussion posted and do, posted on Wednesday, do the following Wednesday. Okay, so read and Think about it and do an individual response Friday to Friday, and then sort of a group discussion um, where you're kind of see what, see 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 something, respond to it, and see how other people are responding to it on Wednesday. Okay. Um, so, and I'm guessing like trying to get everybody to Zoom to to log in and Zoom do a Zoom meeting at the time we meet in class is probably, I'm leaning against that. If anybody really would like to strongly <laughs> express an opinion in favor, I'm open. But I just think it might be hard to coordinate. So anybody have anything you want to say about that? Or? Okay, so I think that's about it. Um, so just to confirm, all the like, discussions and and homework assignments is all still through Canvas, not yeah. another Yeah, it's all going to be site. through Canvas. Yeah, because it's basic. Canvas just takes all the stuff that you would kind of do in other apps and puts it in one place for your course. So it's basically like taking what we have through Skype and you know FaceTime, texting, messaging, and it just sort of builds all that into one place where all your coursework is there. And then as you do it, you know, I can set up those tasks as assignments that then go into the gradebook. So that's what it's, it's doing. So next week, I present, uh, so I have two options, either record myself or write what I was going to say. Yeah. And then, uh, what is the due date for that? <laughs> yes, yes. What is the due date for that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's the answer. Um, I got to think about it. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I think it's just you next week. Oh, yeah, Starland on Mexico. Um, so just aim to do what you were going to do for class to get the ball rolling. Probably by the end of Friday, maybe, if you could post it. And then I'm going to, like, I, I would like people to respond. I, I don't know. I think I was, what I was thinking to sort of simulate discussions on people's presentations is say, like, here's how many, here's how many presentations we have left. To do well in participation grade, you need to have something to say on half of them or something. Put one thing in on half of them. So, you know, it's your responsibility to see what Starlin and we got about half the rest of the class still has to say. And then, you know, just know, keep, you know, chime in with something, some comment, thought, question, um, based on what you, what you hear. But I got to think about that, how to, how to make that work. 
if you ask a question, then okay, what is he going to like stand by and respond to? I, I don't know yet. So we might just make it. I don't know. If it gets too overwhelming, I might just be like, okay, forget it. Just, just upload your thing. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to try to make it as streamlined as possible, so it's not too crazy. Okay. Anybody else? And um, I would just urge you to, um, this is my little personal thing, you know, um, be aware of where you're getting your information, double check where you're getting your information um, in terms of what's trustworthy. And not that you don't listen to a, listen to a variety of sources, but understand who they are and what they're, where they're speaking from and what their priorities are in communicating with you. So, um, and then I found myself, like yesterday, I was just all this news happening, and I'm trying to like figure out how to do this, but I was easily distracted by like what's going on in the news. Like, I just want to know, I just want to know. That's not a good idea. <laughs> so, like, I think I, I find I had to control my own urge to like keep checking, because um, it's really distracting and you can't get anything done, or you're constantly interrupted. And our brains like to kind of get into a groove and go for a little while and then take a break. Um, but if you're constantly checking, you're interrupting the groove that you can get, and it's really counterproductive. So these devices are great magic. I mean, they draw your attention and keep you wanting to swipe and check and, you know, click. So just take care of yourself mentally as well as physically. Um, and I would just, if you're trying to figure out who's a good news source, I, you know, maybe it's sort of the, the old professorial types, but NPR is pretty good, I think. They got a good podcast. I was listening in a radio show called The One A, or just One A, I think it is. And that's just a talk show about news. And they do, on Fridays, they do 90 minutes of reviewing the week's events and different journalists talking and everything. And so they have 45 minutes about domestic and 45 minutes about international. So I was listening to the international and it's like explaining what's going on in the different, in, around the world and how different governments are handling it, what's the best way to handle it. It's like, yeah, it's kind of thoughtful. It's good. So, all right, let's have Gina tell us a little bit about Switzerland. Um, and I'm going to stop the, the video and uh, pull some